What's up, my friends? <laughs> How goes it today? I notice I'm wearing this funky ass jacket. I picked this up at Goodwill today for like half price, so it was like six bucks, and uh, I had to have it. I've been looking for a long jacket like this, so uh, that's why I'm wearing the funky jacket. And of course, you can't see probably on camera, but I'm wearing yellow pants and sandals, so um, to make sure that if I'm not going to match, I'm not going to match perfectly. With the yellow eyes and the owl, I mean, that draws it all together, right? It's a little funkadelic. I tend to wear funkadelic stuff, but uh, <coughs> I was thinking about this, why we, I, I don't know, I, I don't want to get into the whole thing about human nature and dress and everything, but rather I guess I was just making a note of that. What I really wanted to talk about was uh, deja vu. And it's the weirdest thing because when I was coming out here, you know, I was going to talk about a few other things and then I had this weird deja vu experience. And it was one of those ones that continues on, where, you know, first you're in one room doing something else, and then you walk outside, and it's almost like you're in a lucid dream, and you want to keep it going. I don't, you know, if you've ever had a lucid dream, you know that if you get too excited about it or overthink it, it you wake up or it goes away. Um, I used to practice lucid dreaming until I learned how to do it, uh, and I could fly and whatnot, and it was still not every time, It was, but at least once or twice a week I was... Having these dreams, I could control and manifest things, and that's pretty amazing. The way the brain works, uh, you know, in regards to dreaming is, uh, you know, I don't know. It's it's some pretty interesting stuff. It's like hey, one of the concepts that always I don't know that I, when I think about dreaming, I think about all the different uh, neurotransmitters that are involved in like waking, you know, hours. For example. You know, dopamine, serotonin, acetylcholine, and norepinephrine. And I guess acetylcholine has to do with sleep, I believe, to an extent. Um, I can't remember the details at the moment, but that when you sleep, you're, when you close your eyes, then the light stops hitting the back. You know, hitting when the light stops hitting your retina, it tells your brain that it's time to produce more melatonin, which helps you to get to sleep. This is why if you sit and watch TV, you're not going to get tired. So if you just close your eyes for a little bit, you're, you know, your body's ready for sleep. And <clears throat> then you go into this dream process, and it's fascinating. When, when we talk, I've had some of the craziest, most detailed dreams within just like a two-minute period or even less, you know, those quick dreams as you're falling asleep. And then they talk about the deep sleep REM dreams, you know, but it's those ones where I'd fall asleep and then I'd wake up around 5 in the morning and go back to sleep for 90 minutes and then wake up and document my dreams, and I used to write them all down as much as I could, and then I realize now I can't remember them, and it's kind of frustrating, and I think, that's okay. Like, for some reason, the mind doesn't want to remember dreams, and there's a, there, that's because I believe your subconscious is dealing with situations, and if our ancestors had woken up and remembered their dreams, let's say, <laughs> they might have, uh, you know, acted on it, really, you know, a tiger attacks you in your dream and you wake up and you think there's a tiger there. So, forgetting our dreams might have been a very crucial thing to allow you to kind of go into this, back into this world. But, uh, it's still interesting that we do dream at all, and that our brain just doesn't work it out without these crazy, drawn-out pictures and details. It's pretty weird, but... Back to, uh, dopamine and, uh, deja vu. Uh, I've had a, quite a few deja vu experiences in the last week, and I found that really interesting, because ordinarily it only happens to me when I'm taking mukuna, and I believe that when your levels of dopamine in your blood or in your brain are high enough at a certain, uh, a certain rate, for some reason your short-term memory skips long-term memory, or should I say long-term memory skips short-term. Um, Here's the theory, because nobody really knows what deja vu is. But while I was taking Makuna prurians, which is a bean that has L-dopa in it, and L-dopa is a precursor to dopamine, 
when I was taking a teaspoon or so each day, I started having deja vu every single day, and I thought it was weird, so I stopped taking it and it went away. And lately I haven't been taking it, but I'm still having them, which makes me think maybe it's a naturally occurring, you know, level of dopamine. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to get into the, you know, scientific jargon, because we still don't even understand how they work together, you know, all these different compounds. But... I do know that taking it gave me deja vu, and then I looked it up and I read some articles of what they thought deja vu was, and one person thought that um, they found that people who had Parkinson's who were on dopa, L-Dopa as a medication were reporting these same symptoms, a lot of deja vu, so I mean it was pretty well confirmed that it has something to do with L-Dopa. And uh, it found out that they were having several of these in these older patients, you know, that were taking this. And they believe that it may have to do with the way your brain handles memory. So if I go through an event, my, your first your memory will process it to short term and then shift it over to long term. And for some reason, sometimes it skips right to long term. And it, it short circuits, if you will. I don't know if it's a bad thing, but um, there's something more to it, though. Deja vu is just the weirdest thing when it happens. And I know a lot of, uh, not, not cultures necessarily, but just, uh, I don't know, mostly in like new age type beliefs, you know, they say, well, uh, if you have a deja vu, it's because you did do it before, or because everything's happened before, or because it happened in another life, or whatever you might, you know, a uh, story we might create for it. I think it's more interesting to analyze what it really is, you know, because it can tell us not something about an old life or a new life or our future, but our body chemistry right now. And the one thing I've found is important is, is knowing your body chemistry. Um, for example, when I start to get a headache in, in the evening or at night, I wake up with a headache and it's a pounding headache in the back, I usually know I'm probably going to vomit soon. And nine times out of ten, that's what happens. I don't vomit very often, but if I get eat something bad or whatnot, I just know because of a headache. And these are little symptoms we get. And this, of course, because the stomach's connected to the brain through the vagus nerve, and they communicate. I mean, the stomach produces all the same neurochemicals that the brain does, uh, serotonin and dopamine, more of it is produced in the gut than in the brain. Um, DMT is produced elsewhere in the body besides the brain as well. So remembering that is important, because there's a, a lot more going on in the body to understand that the gut has to have a, has a crucial role in... Um, communicating with the brain. So when you're going to puke, uh, your head might feel it. In a lot of different regards, when I have very subtle, let's say my eyes are, I have a you know, fuzzy vision and I can track it down to maybe a certain herb I'm taking or uh, maybe I'm feeling like there's something missing in my diet and so I look back on what I used to eat or what I've been not eating as much of and uh, as you get older, learning to track down your body type and understanding how it reacts to foods and substances becomes, you know, a very crucial thing because you want to make sure that you're always feeling your greatest. I mean, there was times when I was younger where I would get away with uh, not really giving a damn, you know, just eating junk food, waking up kind of feeling crappy, but oh well, don't really have any responsibilities. And, you know, when you're a parent, father, husband, you know, and you work and you know, do all the normal things that an adult does, uh, supposedly as an adult, uh, it's hard to it's hard to just take a day off out of the blue. You you usually have to keep going, so you want to make sure that you're at your best. And I guess it's something I took for granted when I was younger. Just had a lot of fun, you know. Didn't eat very well or really take care of myself. And it's funny I feel healthier as an adult than I did as a kid. So uh, go figure. I mean, uh, we learn from our mistakes and our bad diets. So. Uh, different chemicals, different foods, all that different stuff. I'm going to go now. I hear my kids in there screaming about something. Hopefully it's a happy scream, but I guess I'll soon find out. So uh, have a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll talk to you all soon. Take care.